I'm sorry, you guys. So my camera died. And um, so I just, I'm using my computer's camera, which is not as good and kind of blurry, but I wanted to make sure to get the story out because I just feel so inspired to share it today. And it's been so long. I've never really shared this story before. Um, but yeah, so I had like three weeks left and they started doing what they usually do. And they started saying, oh, like the Excel spreadsheets that you've created for us, we don't really like, we can't really use that. Mind you, they don't know what the, they didn't know what the Excel spreadsheet that they had created, that I had created. They didn't know what the Excel spreadsheet that I had created for them looked like or was. So the first two to three days that I was freaking out, I literally even called the meeting and I asked them if there was any way to maybe just go part-time or, you know, because we're in the middle of a pandemic, I think that's really what just freaked me out. So for this first three days, literally it was like just three days. And then on the fourth day, I was like, I was fine after that. It was so weird. And so the second day, I and then on Monday, called the meeting on Tuesday, I met up with them. So on Monday, I got all my ducks in a row as far as like the Excel spreadsheet, which I was very confident about. That Excel spreadsheet was a bomb, okay? It had like macros in it. It had all type of graphs in it, but they just hadn't seen it. And they hadn't asked to see it. So I didn't realize they wanted to see it, you know? And I was miserable there every day. So I wasn't really thinking like, oh, let me go show off in this. Like, And I'm just not, my mentality is not that of a worker's mentality. So I'm like, you don't ask to see it, that's on you. <laughs> you know, so I brought it in this time around and I showed it to them and they literally, it was like silence. They were like, well, we didn't know you had all this. And I was like, well, yeah, but no one ever asked. And the manager had been on vacation for the past two weeks because I had spent that whole time building it because they had just put me on that project and she came back. And the next thing you tell me, like the next day that she's back is that the role is going away. So obviously there hasn't really been any time in between there. They're like, well, we didn't know you had this and stuff like that. And then I was like, yeah, I didn't really realize and whatnot. And so they said, oh, it's actually pretty good. But they didn't act like they really were that into it, like super into it. They didn't act like they were so into it. It turns out that they wanted that Excel spreadsheet so bad. And I didn't even realize it because they were trying to play it cool for a while until they couldn't play it cool anymore because the time kept coming closer and closer to where it was time for me to leave. And that Excel spreadsheet had so much data that I had put together in one place to make it easier for them. And then it was like, different sheets that were, would translate the data into graphs. It was just, it was really nice. And I had taught myself how to do that, actually, because I didn't know how to do that before. I just taught myself how to do all of, well, I knew how to use Excel. I was pretty decent at it. But some things I included in there, uh, new features that I included in, in there, just because I felt like, oh, this will help, this will work, blah, blah and it looks good. So I, I taught myself how to use those new features. And so they acted like they were, they, they acted like they liked the spreadsheet, but it's not that big of a deal type of thing. You know, when someone's like, oh, that's cool. But in reality, they're really wanting that spreadsheet, <laughs> that they really want that thing from you. So, you know, a day goes by, a day or two goes by, and then my manager comes in and, and, and asks me, hey, that Excel sheet, can you send it to me? And I'm like, send it to you? I thought you didn't want it. That's what I told her. I said, what do you mean send it to you? I thought you guys didn't want it. I thought that you said that you would find another way to keep track of all of the, that data. Because no one, you guys, no one on that team was competent with, like they were all so, no, Excel, not with Excel, not with anything that, have to do with like data and keeping track of data. None of them. And they were all older too. 
So it wouldn't have really done them much good because I'm the one that created the Excel spreadsheet. But I guess they were going to try to find someone to keep up with the Excel spreadsheet, but they wouldn't have been able to. They, that, that, what I did was a full-time role it, on its own. And it wasn't even my primary role. They had added stuff to my primary role. And that was one of the things that they added. But that alone could have been its own full-time job. So they, they wouldn't have been able to keep up with it anyways. So she comes and asks me, hey, can you send it over, this and that? And I was like, okay. So I thought that was so weird. I was like, because I told her, I said, I thought you guys said you were going to just find a different way of using it and you didn't need my spreadsheet. She's like, no, like, you know, we just, so we can have the information and transitioning and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll try to find a way. I'm not sure if I still have it though. If I put so much work into that thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what, those are my skills. That's my work. At the very least, you have, like, the com companies need to realize, like, that's what you pay us for. You don't pay us to come here and kiss your ass, you know? It's our skill set, but they get it confused all the time. And so I'm sure when they were cutting people off, they were thinking, like, oh, she doesn't really talk as much because I'm pretty introverted at work at the any eight to five because I just don't want to be be there. I don't want to be talking to people. I'm one of those people that I just want to do my job and go home. And within HR, it's almost impossible to be that way uh, because they just won't let you live. And I was like, wow, how strange. Like they had said that they, they acted like they weren't interested in this sheet at all. Well, you know, like, oh, it wasn't a big deal. And now that I'm about to like, leave two three days after the meeting I guess they had they talked to each other and I could tell that they wanted that excel sheet so bad and I know they wanted it because I had spent enough time at that job to know what these people like and I built that sheet exactly like that but because they never gave me the opportunity to show it blah 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 blah, blah that's on them you know you snooze you lose and that, that's how I view it so you know, I tell them that and they were like, okay. And at this point, I still have about three weeks left or so. So I'm just kind of doing my thing, like waiting for the day to come. <laughs> we're just whiling away time, y'all. Like I'm just, every day that I go, it, it's becoming harder and harder to go in there because I don't want to go. After that third day, I was just like, I wish I could just sleep today and not have to go back there you know and so uh that week it all happened so quickly within a week you, uh, this this all happened within the same week so that was like on Wednesday when she was like oh this and that and whatnot and like can you send it to me and all that and I was like oh yeah, yeah sure and so Thursday goes by I come I'm at this point I'm just coming in doing the bare minimum, obviously, and going home because there's not much I can do. I'm leaving anyway. So there's really not much that I can help with as far as like things that would be just, oh, just do, you know, do this, do that. Cause I was working on projects. So, so I come in, try to keep my head down. Cause I know that it's almost time. And then I leave, I do, I do that on Thursday, do that on Friday, the weekend rolls around and Monday I'm dreading going in. And I'm like, why was I so concerned about this job going away again? Like I absolutely despise this job. <laughs> it was the pandemic. The pandemic is what scared me because it, there was a pandemic and, um, but that still shouldn't have scared me, but that's what did it. Otherwise I wouldn't have... Like, I, I don't think I would have reacted in that way, but. This was the craziest thing that I ever to date. One of the craziest things, if not the craziest things that I have ever to date had happened to me working in the corporate scene and in the corporate world. And they wanted that spreadsheet so badly, y'all, so badly that they waited for me to go to lunch. They didn't say anything, mind you, right? They had asked, I hadn't sent it yet. I hadn't sent um, the Excel sheet yet or anything like that. So they waited for me to go to lunch. 
right? And the vice president as well as the uh, senior manager, they both went into my office, grabbed my laptop and the desktop, because I had, you know, there was a desktop that I had and a laptop. They grabbed both the laptop and my desktop. This is how desperate they were. I was, I didn't even know I had created something that they would be that desperate for it. It was nuts. And I'm thinking in my mind, like, if you're going to be so desperate for this, then maybe those are the employees that you might want to try to keep around, right? Anyways, they grabbed both of them and searched and looked through my work laptop as well as the desktop. And I had no idea. I had gone to lunch. Actually, I used my lunch for I was using my lunch for piano practice. And so I had gone to piano practice at this point on my lunch break. So I was on my way back from piano practice and I get a call. Right? I get a call from the senior manager. Ding 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 ding. I pick up in the car. I'm like maybe three minutes away from the work location at this point. Almost almost there, almost about to pull into the garage. And I was like, that's so weird. Like she's literally never called me before. The the last call that I received from her on my cell phone was, you know, whenever I received the offer for the job. So I pick up the phone, I'm like, hello, hi, uh, such and such. I won't disclose names. And she's like, oh, hey, like, I uh, just wanted to see if you could come into my office as soon as you get back from lunch. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, no problem. And so that whole three minutes when I was approaching the garage and everything, I kept thinking, what in the world is going on? It's so weird, so weird. I'm telling you, you guys, the amount of psychological abuse I suffered at that place, I would not ever wish on my worst enemy. So, so I park, I go upstairs, and I did just that. I went straight into her office. And in her office, she's sitting there and uh, so is one of the other managers. There's just, there's a different, there's another manager that's, that was over a different team within the HR department. I don't wanna be too specific, y'all. But, so they were both sitting there and I walk in and remember like, I'm wondering like what this could be about, but I'm not scared of anything I could give I could care less because I'm already set to leave my date is set in stone I've already done my processing I have my ducks in a row I've taken my board you know I've taken my board and everything so and now I have time to basically format the way that I want my life to be and what I want it to look like and stuff like that and I'm actually supposed to be transitioning onto what I went to school for, so it worked out really well for me. And so the most I had to do was just kind of come to terms with it from a psychological perspective. Not not come to terms with not having a job, but just come to terms with the fact that my, uh, my everyday was gonna change again. So my everyday, one thing that I've learned is you just have to be flexible because not every day is gonna look like the last day, and that's really the best way to live. You don't want every day to look just like the last day. So I was just kind of getting prepared and used to that and set my mind up, especially because I kept thinking about all the experience that I was going to gain. And I was nervous because I was, mind you, for the first time transitioning into my field. So that was very, I was very nervous about that because I didn't know what that would be like. And I was excited at the same time. So that was the most that I was thinking about. So I walk in there and I'm not scared, like, as far as like, what they're gonna say or anything like that because A, I know that I haven't done anything wrong and B, I already have a date set when it will be my last day. And so they're both sitting there and I walk in and she has the senior, the senior manager is sitting behind her desk and she has my laptop on her desk. 
And so when I walk in, the first thing I notice was my laptop that was sitting on her desk. And you guys, I cannot explain the feeling of incredible confusion when I saw that. I mean, I have never felt that confused in my entire life. Not just confused, but I also felt so violated, you know? And so I just stood there, straight face, but in my mind, my mind was running, you know? trying to keep up with the events that were happening and so she's sitting there and she's like well um here's your computer and there's a sticky note on top of the computer and she was like you're gonna have to use this username and this password until your last day because we had to change your username and your password and we don't want you to change it back to something different and I was like okay and she was like yeah so we checked the laptop and we checked the work computer the work desktop because we were looking for that Excel spreadsheet <laughs> yup you guys I was like in my mind not in person but in my mind I was like what so um, so she was like, we, we, we were looking for that Excel spreadsheet and she was like, but we weren't able to find it, you know? And so if you, if you have it, May, please go ahead and send it to us. Go ahead and send that to us. And I was like, and, and, and I remember this, my response to her was like, oh yeah, well, of course it's not in there. I already told you that I don't have it anymore. I didn't know that you guys wanted it. You didn't, you said that you didn't want it. And so therefore... I don't have it. I literally, that was my response. Even though my mind was going nuts, like, because I couldn't believe. <laughs> oh my God, I have so many stories that I'm going to share with you guys. Now that I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable in front of the camera. But I could not believe what was happening to me. I I am the one of those people that just has that luck, you know? Things that you never believe, like, oh my gosh, that could never happen to someone. Maze your girl, right? So, and that goes for both good and bad things, thankfully. So it kind of upsets itself, but it was incredible. I've never experienced something like this before. And I've been in corporate for a while. I had been in corporate for a while. Um, so this was like a government setting, taking me for a whole new spin. I thought corporate was so bad. And here I am at the government setting, like just when you think it can't get any worse, right? So I told her that my mind's going crazy, like in disbelief. And I have such a mixture of emotions at this point. One of them actually being the sense of um, just kind of like happiness and entertainment at seeing them squirm for this Excel spreadsheet, but also a feeling of being violated a mixture of that and just the feeling of just being so shocked at what I was experiencing like is this real type of feeling so I told that was my response when she said that I said oh yeah I mean I already I already told you it's it's not in there you're not gonna find anything did you think I mean I wasn't lying about that I, you, you guys said you didn't want it and so I don't have it it's not in there <laughs> Yeah, and she was like, okay, well, you know, if, if you have it or you're able to find it, like, please go ahead and send it to us and just use that password and that username until your last day. Don't change it. Um, the same thing with your uh, remote desktop or whatever. Y'all, I was like, the fuck, the, you know? And so, I grabbed the laptop. I was like, okay, sure. I grabbed the laptop, went back to my sitting area, and my heart was beating profusely because I feel I have a feeling they also probably checked my bag because I had because I had my a work bag that I would bring with me on a daily basis, and I feel like they probably went through my bag. But I looked at my bag, and it looked the same as I when I left. For lunch because I had to grab my keys and stuff so from what I could remember it looked the same 
but I wouldn't be surprised if they also went through my bag, which they wouldn't have found anything in my bag either, right? If they had went through, through my bag because I'm not that stupid. <laughs> I was already uncomfortable in that environment, so I'm not gonna keep anything that I consider valuable or my work, my property, intellectual property. I'm not gonna keep anything like that in that environment. I'm just gonna take it home, my space and then y'all can do whatever you want with your space and i had done that because i was leaving anyway and i didn't trust any one of them after everything that i had experienced from being there so there's no way down to even documents that i wanted i literally just took it home very very early on i did that very very early on anything that i consider valuable and that's one advice if you guys working don't ever 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 get comfortable ever ever tomorrow's not guaranteed don't ever get comfortable with these people there's no lines they won't cross there's no boundaries that they won't cross and you can't ever ever trust anyone that you work with period i don't care if you feel like they're your best friend they're not so um so anyways they weren't gonna find anything they didn't find anything but anyways so monday rolls around Tuesday rolls around and they come back into my office because at this point I haven't sent anything and I had no intention of sending anything. Why should I work that hard for something that you told me you didn't want? And so like, so now you want me to like start looking everywhere, doing the most to send you something that you said that you didn't want. That's not my fault. You said you didn't want it. So Tuesday rolls around and here comes not even my manager, but my manager's manager, you guys, my manager's manager. <laughs> here he comes into my office and he looks at me and he goes like, so about that spreadsheet, do you have that spreadsheet? Um, can you like send it to, send it to us or send it to me? And he's being super nice. This is the first time, mind you. <laughs> You guys, this is the first time this man has ever stepped into my office, like ever, like, and for those of you that are wondering, no, I didn't have like a whole office to myself or anything. They literally put me in like a closet or something. It was, it was like a spare office that they put all their snacks in and stuff like that. And I guess they didn't have any space or any other space. So they just stuck me in there in the corner, <laughs> like a nobody, right? But, you know, I'm good at just, like, doing what I need to do as long as I know there's an end to it because, you know, I'm not going to be there that long or whatever. Um, but anyways, so that's what I mean by office. I have never once seen, seen this man come into my office area, ever. I had gone into his office once or twice because I was having issues with uh, uh, how I was being managed essentially. I just felt like, I, I feel like the they were so, it, there was a lot that was wrong with that job from the time that I came into that job because I came in under a, under a particular manager and then that manager that I came in, let's just call that manager senior manager. And so the senior manager had a manager underneath her. And I came in, I came in under the senior manager. And when I came in, it was all good. On the second day, the senior manager calls me and the manager under her into the office. And then she just says, oh, okay, just, from now on, you're actually going to be under under the manager, under the under this regular manager, right? And I'm thinking in my head, like, okay, at, at this point, I'm at a certain level career-wise, and so to be underneath the senior manager is better for me career-wise, and that's a, that was a huge part of me accepting the role. So for her to make that change was nuts, right? So she just said, oh, you know are you good with that? And I was like, okay, you know? So that was the first thing that happened. And I did not like that at all. And so I tried it for a few months and I think that like 
so this regular manager didn't have any body underneath her. So her management skills were non-existent, y'all, like non-existent management skills. Not only that, she spent all her time kissing the ass of the senior manager. And so she was always scared to make any decisions of her own. And um, so that was like a huge issue as well, because I wasn't really getting training every management meeting that we would have the both of them would be in it and it was like really weird because I was confused like okay who's the my manager again you know it was a mess a complete mess and so um anyways and I think she was a little bit threatened by me just because I have a lot of letters behind my name just from school degrees certifications and stuff and at that that point she did it and here's the funny part <laughs> i have i'm a senior professional human resources uh person like i have a senior professional human resources certification and you have to have a number of years of experience and then take the board and all that stuff to get that she didn't have any of that right and while i was working there she took the test for a professional in human resources, not a senior, just a professional. So there's different layers. There's the professional, there's the senior. And so she got the professional, but didn't get the senior. <laughs> so I'm like, how do you have a subordinate that is like, you, <laughs> and then on top of that, you don't have any management experience. Chad, it was, it was crazy. So there were like a lot of things going on. So this whole time I had gone to his office twice. The, the this is the manner, this is the basically one of the VPs, right? Over over the human resources department. So it's not like, but um I had went to talk to him about that at least two times to tell him, like, hey, I'm highly confused. I, you know, I'm not understanding what this is about. It turns out what it ended up being was that that senior manager and that the manager underneath her, they're really, really close friends. And so the senior manager really wanted to get the manager underneath her because the manager underneath her only had a title. She had no team. She wasn't the manager of anything or anyone. So she really wanted to get someone hired for the manager underneath her so that the manager underneath her could get some experience and stuff like that. And at the same time, the manager underneath her was doing nothing but kiss, kiss and ask because she doesn't have a choice. And so that's really what was going on. So I just, I was the product of a, a political game, basically, that they were playing. And so um, anyways, I went you know, to his office twice, talked to him. And this whole time, I had never seen that man in my office you guys never never seen him anywhere even close to where I was sitting so he comes in the next the following week it was like on a Tuesday and he goes hey about that spreadsheet closes the door it's weird I was like the hell is going on here <laughs> it was so crazy closes the door and everything and proceeds to ask about this spreadsheet like hey so about the spreadsheet do you have it? Can you send it? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, um, no, I haven't been able to locate it yet. And I told the other manager as well, the senior manager, I told her that I don't have that anymore because they, you guys said you didn't want it. So I didn't think there was any reason to keep it. And he was like, hey, listen, we really, really need that spreadsheet. And when they looked into your laptop or your computer, they said that they didn't find anything. They couldn't find it except for the very, very early versions of it, which didn't have graphs, didn't have anything but like info when I was still building this, this Excel sheet. And, but they did see that there had been an external storage device that had been connected to the computer a few times and of course unconnected and, and they said maybe that was your phone they weren't sure what that was and there had been things that had been erased completely from the computer 
so they really didn't have they they really don't have a way of getting it back and he was like i didn't even know that was possible i didn't even know you could like erase something like permanently from your computer or a computer and i'm thinking in my mind like holy smokes this people really tried it i mean they <laughs> and so he was like so you know we really need it blah 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 and the whole time i could not believe it i honestly you guys could not believe how desperate they were for something that's my intellectual property can you believe it it's like I'm not taking the data with me. I don't care about the data itself. Like that data, as a matter of fact, probably changes and increases on a daily basis. So it's not like the most current data. And you have the data. What you want, it, what you're trying to steal from me, essentially, is my intellectual property. The concept that I've built, the Excel spreadsheet, you know, and, and almost like a, the Excel spreadsheet is a product. It's like a product that I built. And I could not believe, I couldn't believe it. These people had been playing like they were so like, um, so much better, so uninterested. Now all of a sudden you're chasing me around and stealing my shit, like to get this spreadsheet. I was like, chill, no. So it was insane, you guys, like, it was insane. I left. They never got the spreadsheet. And I didn't feel bad about it. But that environment became super difficult for me to be in. And so I think subconsciously I was trying to find a way out early while still getting paid for the remainder of my time. And so when I was having that conversation with the people on like benefits and things like that and then it's it just clicked five minutes into that conversation i think the reason it it seems like it quit so quickly but in reality what i'm thinking happened is subconsciously i was already looking for a way out and i was already running those scenarios through my mind subconsciously but whenever it clicked in that moment five minutes into the conversation it it was basically my subconscious thoughts came up to my conscious thoughts so they those thoughts became conscious and not only do they become conscious they aligned right i could see the clear path of how to get it done to where i didn't have to spend a single second longer in this environment so i think that's why it seemed like it just kind of happened but it actually probably didn't and yeah y'all like because it was becoming so toxic and so hard for me to be in that environment just because like they were so desperate and so even though i was enjoying watching them squirm it was still like super uncomfortable <laughs> and so he goes oh well from here forward i just want you to focus all your energy on replicating that excel sheet we really need that excel sheet so now they're starting to come clean they're so desperate right that they can't even help themselves they're like, we really need that Excel sheet. We really, really need that Excel sheet. So anything else that you were doing before, that goes to the wayside. Don't even worry about doing any of that. Just focus on all your the time that you have left on replicating this Excel sheet because we really need that Excel sheet, the one that you built. Ciao. That's when it became clear to me just how desperate they were. But it's so silly because what you're desperate for are my skills, not the Excel spreadsheet. But they they just wanted that spreadsheet because they had already pulled the plug on my position. And so that's all that they could get. So at least maybe they could show it to other people, get it replicated or something if they needed to. But that Excel spreadsheet was bound. Bound. So anyways... So he says that and I was like, oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can do that. But I just, it took so long to create this fake cell sheet. I don't think that I'm going to have enough time to replicate it, but I'll definitely do my best. So setting expectations low. So if it doesn't happen, they're not too surprised. If it does happen, even better for them, I guess. It makes no difference for me. I'm leaving anyway. So what do I care? 
So anyways, so I was like, yeah, 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 sure. That's, that's fine. We can do that. And of course I'm not doing that. Are you serious? Replicating that, that, that was a lot of work and coding and in an, in coding on an intermediate level. No, it's not like programming, but nonetheless, it's like, there's no way I'm doing that when I only have like a little bit over two weeks to go. So, but I was just like, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. And so at that point, you know, I was like, there's no way I'm just going to write it out. You know, I, the next morning I started talking to the very next morning. So this is like a Wednesday morning, I think. I started talking to someone from a different department. It was more like the benefits payroll department. I started talking to someone from there and I was like, yeah, like, you know, I was telling them about the position being eliminated and like, you know, what I was going to do next because they were asking. And at that point, you guys, ah, I had already, while I was there, I had gotten my licensing, my board certification license, uh, counseling license. I had gotten nationally certified as a counselor and things like that. So I'd gotten all my ducks in a row while I was there and I already had that. And so in reality, I should have, the next step was for me to like leave that place and start working as a counselor so I could start getting my experience and living the way that I wanted to live. But I was so scared. It's crazy. They had to, they literally pushed me into my destiny. They pushed me right into my destiny. Um, I'm supposed to have been able to push myself, but I guess God saw that I wasn't doing that and use them to push me right into my destiny. So it was great. But I was talking to the benefits lady and she was saying like, yeah, cause you get, and we started talking about how many days you get, how many days you get off vacation days, things like that. Y'all five, five minutes into that conversation, it just clicked. I said, wait a second, I have enough days to where I can be off for my last week, for the full week of my last week. And I still have about, actually, I think I still, yeah, I still have, I still had a little bit over two weeks left. So I still had quite a bit of time. And I said, okay. Um, and, and, and at this point I hadn't accumulated that much time because I was like on my 10th month, 10th or 11th month, but I still had some time that I could use because I hadn't used all my time or all the time. So I said, wait a second, wait a second. So five minutes into that conversation, it clicked. And I was like, today is going to be my last day. It just clicked. And keep in mind that morning, it was early in the morning, y'all. It was like, I used to get there at 7.30. My ship was 7.30 to like 4.30 or 5. So it, this was like around like 7.45. And when I was having the conversation with her, it was like around like 7.45. And like five minutes into the conversation, I was like, this is going to be my last day. Because that conversation had set my mind right. Like that, what am I still doing here? Are you kidding? I have off days that I can use and things like that. So, and keep in mind, I came in that morning, not thinking that that day was going to be my last day. I came in thinking, okay, another day off, just a few more days and I'll be out of here. I would have made it. Ciao. We started talking. I was like, today is going to be my last day. I went back into the office after that conversation and um, packed up all my stuff because I had already started packing my stuff. So I didn't have much left. And I was like, yep, this is the last of it. Packed up all my stuff. And I went and then um, I went, I walked over to the senior manager's office and I kind of peeked through. And she was on the phone. Her door was locked. She was on the phone. So this worked out even better than I thought it was going to work out. 
because what I was going to do is I was going to tell her, Hey, I don't feel too well, which I didn't. I was like, I don't, I was going to tell her, I don't feel too well. I think I'm going to have to go home. And remember you guys, this is during COVID time. So I'm thinking I might have COVID and I'm over here trying to power through this for what reason, you know? And it just clicked. Like, I don't have to power through this. Like literally I can make, I need to prioritize myself and prioritize my, my safety. This is nuts that I'm still doing this, but this is the control that they have over you or they want to have over you. And it just clicked, like, what are you doing? Prioritizing this place that you're not even going to be in for another month over your own health? No way. So I picked through. She was on the phone and her door was closed. So guess what I did? Guess what I did, you guys? I went back to my office, okay? Grabbed my stuff because I had already packed it up. Grabbed my stuff, grabbed my bag, and walked right out. I walked right out, right through the front doors, right to the elevator. So I passed everyone with my bag and everything, walked right out. And this was like at 8 a.m. in the morning. And on my phone, because at that time I had my work email on my phone. Can you imagine? Oh, my God. Working for someone else is the worst. Your work email on your phone? Oh, my gosh. Anyways. I had my work email on my phone, pulled it up while I was like in the elevator going down and typed up like a short email to the senior manager and put the VP on there. And I said, hi, I wasn't feeling too well today. I went to your office to try to tell you that I, I think I'm going to have to go to the hospital, go get checked. Um, and I might not be able to come back today. Uh, but your door was closed. So just wanted to give you a heads up and let you know that that's what's happening. And I had to leave and for, for the day, at least for, for, for now, because I have to go take care of myself. So I sent that email girl and, and I got in my car. And as soon as I drove out of that garage was as soon as I drove out of the garage and the front of my car touched the sunlight, that was the moment that I died and started living at the same time. That was the moment, that, that was the moment for me. So as soon as the front of my car came out of that garage and touched the first piece of sunlight, that was the moment that I died in leaving that garage. I was reborn and I started living. I know it sounds crazy, cliche, whatever, but literally that was it. And that was the moment I started living and I was smiling the whole time. I couldn't believe the feeling of just freedom that I felt, the just the feeling, I couldn't believe it. So that was the moment, that's when it happened. That's when I died and I actually started living. And from there, I, I did that. I went, to the I went to the doctor, got a test. I got the test, it take, it, at that point it was taking a while and they don't let you go back into the office for 10 days um, while the test is pending. So guess what? I was at home for 10 days and then I just used I, my off days. I'm still kind of like ill because I left, I actually left two off days on the table because I didn't think of this sooner. I didn't think to choose myself sooner. Otherwise I could have had two extra off days, but all in all, I think I did pretty well. Um, and so I was out for the two weeks for for 10 days because I couldn't come back in because of the COVID. I had my doctor's note, which I emailed to them on that same day because they emailed me back and they were like, oh, send the doctor's notes and that they didn't believe me. I had my doctor's note, attached it. Here's my doctor's note. I'm going to have to be out on the uh, for 10 days. My doctor's note said that. 
I emailed it to them, chat, turned on my TV. I turned on my TV. Oh, we, oh, we. And did I mention that I wasn't making any money? I was still having to work my side hustles super hard to cover my bills. And these people wanted me to do what? Turn on my TV. I was like, doctor's orders, sent it in. And at that point, you know, game over for them. There's nothing they can do. There's nothing they can do because I'm already leaving anyway. It's doctor's orders. The doctor's note is right there. The phone number is right there. If they want to call, I'm sure they probably did call and verify it. And at this point, I had already taken the rest of the days off up until the last day, my last, my last day. So I wasn't coming back. <laughs> and anyone that would go into the office space where I was sitting, it was completely empty because I had already packed all my stuff over the past like couple of days I had spent time packing stuff that I wanted as far as like office stuff and things like that. That was it. That was it, y'all. That was the moment that I died and started living. And ever since then, I haven't looked back. All right, thank you guys so much for joining me today and listening to my story. Love you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.